Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. The recent visit to the United States of Pakistani teenager Malala Yousafzai was widely covered in the media. Yousafzai, as you might know, was attacked a year ago by the Taliban for her outspoken advocacy of educational equality. She survived a bullet wound to the head. But one part of her message didn't get through. During her October 11th visit to the White House, Yousafzai told Barack Obama that his administration's drone strikes were fueling terrorism. As McClatchy's Leslie Clark reported in a statement after the meeting, the 16-year-old thanked Obama for supporting education in Pakistan and for Syrian refugees. She also said this, I also expressed my concerns that drone attacks are fueling terrorism. Innocent victims are killed in these acts and they lead to resentment among the Pakistani people. The White House statement about her visit didn't mention that part, nor did it seem to register in corporate media that seemed to be following her visit and her story very closely. If Americans want to understand how U.S. wars are experienced by those on the other side of the military attacks, that means listening to all of what they say, including, or especially, those parts that are hard to hear. Fareed Zakaria seems to have a reputation for being the thinking man's pundit, but a more fitting description of the CNN host might be the wealthy man's pundit. Zakaria's October 13th show featured a discussion of income inequality and the second anniversary of Occupy Wall Street, a worthy topic that's generally undercovered, but who did he invite to talk about it? Why, Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, that's who along with the soon-to-be-retiring CEO of Duke Energy, Jim Rogers, and telecom billionaire Dennis O'Brien. Whatever your politics, it was just plain odd listening to three people who benefit wildly from the upward redistribution of income muse on Zakaria's question. I also asked my panelists about income inequality, a hot topic not only in America, but around the world these days. How did we get so unequal, and what responsibility do corporations have to fix the problem. And it turns out O'Brien, who reportedly resides in Malta to avoid paying taxes in Ireland, thinks some of the Occupy message is worth listening to. Blankfein, on the other hand, well, he has a different take. So let me ask you, looking back, you know, with Occupy Wall Street, uh, you know, having its anniversary, what do you think it all means? The Goldman Sachs was not well, uh, incidental to this whole I issue. I must have missed it. I didn't even realize this was such a big anniversary. <laughs> um, I must send flowers. <laughs> the discussion was not very illuminating or very surprising from a host who seems to feel that there is no question that is not best approached by gathering a group of CEOs. And finally, media outlets' failure to disclose their conflicts is bad but admitting to questionable decision-making doesn't undo it. ABC's This Week had Julian Assange of WikiLeaks on the show October 13th. Now that's probably better than yet another interview with a Beltway politician, but Assange was invited primarily to react to a new film about WikiLeaks called The Fifth Estate, which, as host George Stephanopoulos explained, is being distributed by ABC Disney's Touchstone Pictures. This week also included an interview with the actor who portrays Assange in the movie. Of course, ABC isn't the only outlet using its news division to hype its other products. Here's NBC Nightly News anchor Brian Williams on October 9th, sounding like he's reading from the company newsletter. Our parent company Comcast made an announcement today that made news in the tech and TV world. It has to do with Twitter and in the near future, the ability to highlight a mention of a clip or a broadcast on Twitter, which then users, Comcast subscribers, could then view instantly on a mobile device or TV by hitting a button that says see it. It would also allow you to record a show or change the channel on your TV at home via Twitter and your handheld device. So that's something to do with Twitter and Twitter users apparently being allowed to share video or change the remote control using their phones or something. Whatever it was, it seems it was only NBC that considered it to be news. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.